Hey, what's going on, everybody? Echo Side Fiend here, back once again. And uh, man, it's been month, month and a half since I've been able to jump up on here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did actually record unboxings of uh, the Twisted um, Electric Lettuce and Alazul Elu's Necronomicon 2. Just did them in one video and went to upload it, and it would not fucking upload. I just used my phone for these, but it would it would upload but then when it was doing the processing it would get to the end of the processing about like 95 96 percent and just stall and uh i tried it twice and the finally the second time i just let it go uh, like and i'll just see how long it just sits there and a little bit later i checked and it was like you know the triangle with the exclamation point in the middle of it in my um youtube uh, studio manager or whatever they call it and uh it just said video enabled to process and um so, yeah, it wouldn't work. I don't know what the deal was, but I tried it uh, twice and finally just gave up. So, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, otherwise, besides that, my normal excuse, the same thing I say every time, uh, just busy as fuck at work. And, um, it's, uh, yeah, we're so shorthanded. I've been working on all my days off except for one, uh, because I had a car repair, um, scheduled, so I couldn't go in that day, but I probably would have otherwise. Um, but... We can be scheduled or on call once a month on your day off, like mine is Wednesday. Um, and uh, so during this, like the last couple months, uh, they just had every, every Wednesday that, that I could be scheduled, I just was. And then they asked me to come in every other time. Like I said, the one time I had to decline, but it, you get paid for it. So, uh, you know, it's not too big of a deal. But uh, And then I was on vacation, not this last week, but the week previous. But I had... Um, two car repairs, two different days, uh, scheduled, and then I went up to Traverse City one day, and then, of course, headed to Fort Wayne, Indiana for the, um, uh, Prom Night Massacre show, and it was just, you know, just too much going on, I just did not have any time to sit down, and again, I mean, like, I did uh, those unboxings already, and I didn't really have much else to do at the time, so, but, um, this one I will be talking about the Prom Night Massacre, Real quickly, I just want to say, uh, as far as the April's streaming Leaves Mugs beaming, uh, I haven't watched a lot of that. A lot of the, that one I missed. Uh, I still have it. I can, you know, I'm Patreon subscriber, I can go back and watch them, which I do plan on. There's a couple that I did miss that I do want to see. Uh, but just with the, um, you know, well, I said I was working on all my days off, and just, I just didn't get around to watching uh, the majority of them that I want to see, I do still want to watch the Mad Professor's Lab. I did see some clips of that when uh, the guys at Deck One Delt were uh, talking about it. I thought that looked funny, so I do want to watch that. Uh, I did watch the talk show. That was really good uh, with, you know, um, Violet J's mom. Uh, what was it? Hornswoggle and then Mark Jury. I thought that was interesting. The video lag was uh, kind of pissing me off, but as long as the audio works, that's mostly what I'd be worried about. Um... Uh, let's see, I did like the jam exam. I did listen to that a couple times. Uh, that was really good because when it's a podcast, I'll just throw it on and listen to it while I'm running my route the next day. But um, I started trying to watch the, the Bruce Brothers Unexplained Phenomena. That one was driving me nuts. Uh, Jay was just talking over everybody, and it seemed like they were kind of unprepared. Uh, so I wasn't wild about that one. The uh, Ned and Game, I watched like the first first uh, round. I was like, nah, I don't care about this. you know. So... Uh, I didn't watch that, but um, I did want to watch the JCW, uh, Fenced in Fury, but uh, I was planning on it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch that when it's on. We'll get together, uh, some of my wrestling fan uh, wrestling fan friends will get together and uh, watch that. And then as it got a little closer, I realized it was on the same night as a little event that some of you might have heard of called WrestleMania 37. <laughs> you know, I'm like, why the fuck did they put that on the same night as night one of WrestleMania 37? Um so I would assume that most people that would have watched that live were probably watching that event by a little company called WWE. So um, I do plan on going back and watching that. It is definitely something I want to check out. I just haven't got around to it yet. And then, of course, I attended the Prom Night Massacre. And um, I do plan on watching that on the, on the Patreon stream. I was going to watch it Saturday night. Like, obviously, the, the concert was Friday. We got back Saturday. We stayed overnight, came back Saturday. And I was going to watch it Saturday night, and I fucking fell asleep. And uh, just haven't got around to watching it since. But, uh, obviously, I can still go on the Patreon stream. I am planning on watching it. So, uh, I would like to just see it from the camera's perspective. So, but uh, so yeah, as far as the rest of this, I'm just going to discuss the Prom Night Massacre show. And I got picked up a few things that I'll show. Uh, the CD we had to wait on, uh, if you are a subscriber of DC Fago Guy, he did talk about that. 
um, in his review. So, uh, but I'll touch on it as well. So, yeah, as far as the event, I was planning on going pretty much right when they announced it. I was like, that's one I'm going to fucking do. Obviously, there was the uh, uh, Ultra Live Monster 5. Um, this ended up being show number two uh, as part of the Patreon stream. So, uh, assuming that, that uh, uh, the gift is being sent out soon, like they said, the second coin will be coming with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as the show, as soon as they announced it, I was like, I'm fucking going... Uh, obviously, it was supposed to be in Detroit at St. Andrews Hall, where they did the first one in 1996, which I unfortunately did not attend. I was listening to them at that time. Uh, after, uh, at that point in time, I'd been a fan of them for about a year and a half. And I remember seeing the, the you know the flyers for it around, but I was like, you know, 18. I was almost 19, but um, I was going on 19. Uh, you know, and I was going to go. I'm like, I'm definitely fucking doing that. A couple of my buddies were like, yeah, let's fucking go. And then as we thought about it more, we're like, we don't know how to fucking get to St. Andrews Hall. I mean, we knew how to get to Detroit, but once we're there, like, how the fuck do we get to St. Andrews Hall? We're all 18, you know, 19. Some of, One of my buddies was going to go. It was only like 16. We're like, we don't know where to fucking go. <laughs> you know? So we're like, yeah, let's not go to that. Obviously, I wish I had now, but whatever. Um, so when they announced this one, I was like, I'm definitely going. And then I did make a video about it as it got a little, uh, after a few days of thinking about it, I was like, how are they going to do the tickets? Is it going to be bidding, you know, because initially it was uh, me and Ms. Hollywood were going to go, uh, you know, attend it together. And um, I'm like, how are they going to do the tickets? Do we both have to bid on a ticket or is it a ticket for two people or what, you know, because if one wins, one doesn't, you know, how's that going to work? And then um, I also heard from a credible source that they, you know, as it was getting a little closer, they were talking about they were going to move it out of state. And as it, I was like, I'm not going to fucking go, you know, fuck it. And, um, I already had the week of vic off for vacation for the uh, now officially canceled Wicked Clowns from Outer Space 2 tour. Uh, and so then as the, you know, they, the show was going to be on the 30th, and I'm like, fuck, I already got the week off and everything. And I was like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna drive out of state and everything. Because I'm thinking when they sit out of state, I'm thinking like down south somewhere, you know. And then uh, when they announced it, they're like, it's going to be in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana is two and a half hours south of me. You know, uh, Detroit for me is two and a half hours west, and I'm sorry, east, two and a half hours east. So it's literally like no uh, difference as far as the, excuse me, as far as the uh, driving. So I was like, you know, two and a half hours south, fuck yeah, I'll do that, you know, and then I'm like, well, let's see how the tickets are. And then they were just like a straight up purchase, you know, you didn't have to bid on them. A uh, hundred bucks, yeah, I know, a little steep, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I was like, you know, for the most part, I was like, you know, I want to go, uh, you know, I want to go to a concert again. I want to see ITP again. Of course I want to support them. And uh, I was like, fuck it. I'm, I'm buying a ticket and I'm going, you know, so I hit up uh, my friend Ivory. Uh, she decided she would like to go. Uh, a friend of hers, uh, who I guess I can say is now a friend of mine, but I didn't know him at the time yet. Andy, uh, he came with us. Uh, unfortunately, Ms. Hollywood decided that just with her work uh, schedule and everything, this wasn't a good idea for her to try to go. So, uh, I had to pass on that, but, uh, you know, it was a great, you know, great time anyway. And, uh, so we got our tickets, um, right when they went on sale, I actually thought they'd be gone in a matter of hours. You know, they were around for a little bit, but, um, so got our tickets right when they went on sale, got a hotel room reserved, uh, you know, checked in with DC Fago guy and Megs. They were going, we got a hotel room at the same uh, hotel. So headed down there and, um, like I said, two and a half hour drive, not too bad. Got down there, hung out in our hotel room for a little bit before heading to the concert venue, which was, uh, 10 minutes down the street. There's a Pierre's, was it entertainment center or concert center, whatever, uh, but Pierre's anyway it was called. I had never been there before. A really cool venue. And I, again, for being uh, just two and a half hours away, it's definitely a venue I would go to again uh, for uh, any other concert, whether it's ICP or, or you know any type of uh, band that I want to see. Really nice place. Um, my only complaint really with the setup was... Uh, so like when you're looking at the stage, even if you were like on the floor, like where we were standing, I'll get to, but, um, even if you're on the floor, there was like a, you know, a pillar, like right in like pretty much the middle. So like, no matter what, when you're looking at the stage, this was like just almost right in the dead center. Um, but I mean, it's a, you know, small complaint, but I kind of wish there was some way they could like work around that, but you know, whatever. It looks like it's probably an old building. There's probably not a lot of, um you know, uh, restructuring they could do, but, uh, but yeah, as far as the venue itself, like I said, it was a nice venue. It was clean. Um, it, it, again, 
clearly not new, but it wasn't like some ancient old building, like just refurbished into a concert hall, you know, it was a really nice place. Um, so again, like I said, like I was going to say where we were standing, so you got the stage and obviously then the floor and then there was a bar and then there was like this raised area where, uh, DC had said they normally have tables and chairs, but those were all packed away or whatever. So it was just this, it was, I guess it was, it, it almost say it was kind of like another part, like a stage almost. I don't know. Maybe they do small shows back there or what, but it was, um, raised up. So you had the bar, uh, a wall, like it's probably about like waist high and you're looking down and the bartenders are right there. So you're just right up above the bartenders and you can see like right over the crowd. It was the perfect spot. Um, so me, DC and Megs were, uh, standing back there for the show. Uh, so it was perfect, perfect spot to, uh, take pictures again, just that pillar kind of like right in the middle of like pretty much every shot that I took, but you know, whatever. Um, and then uh, of course, again, I have to say as usual, my usual complaint, the merch booth was a fucking disaster. Uh, as far as people just cramming in, they really need to work on like maybe putting up some ropes or something. Uh, I literally was like waiting in line. Ran into uh, Andy, uh, Big Andy, I call him. Uh, he's the ec big Echo Side player. Um, so I ran into him. He had gotten his stuff and kind of pushed me in front of him as he was leaving. But then even then, I still had, like, I'm waiting and people are just shuffling, like, right up and, and just, you know, pushing in front of me. So I had, like, a whole bunch of people all get, you know, get in front of me, like, even though I'd been waiting longer, you know. And it's like, everybody's just crushing in like this and then... The CD, they didn't have the CD ready for, uh, you know, if you were dressed up, you were supposed to get a uh, Prom Night Massacre exclusive CD single. They didn't have those ready, which is fine, whatever. It was probably kind of a, maybe a last minute uh, thing they decided to do. But, so they had a clipboard that you were supposed to write your name on. And, like, so the guy hands it to, you know, your write, write your name and address guy, hands it to somebody. And then, like, somebody just grabbed it from her and people just started passing it around. There was people, like signing on it that weren't even dressed up you know it was supposed to be just if you were dressed up and so the guy's like yelling he's like get that clipboard back up here it's only for people if you're dressed up and so finally like it kind of made its way back up and then when i finally got up to get my stuff uh it was actually a uh, louis simpson was uh up there helping me and i'm like hey do you have the clipboard he goes i don't know anything about it that's that guy you gotta ask him well it's the other merch guy he's all the way at the other end helping people down there so i was like i'll just come back up and sign it later you know so uh, a little bit later, after I, you know, during ICP set, I saw you know the uh, merch booth had dwindled down a little bit, and so I went back up there, and they, there this time they had it tied down. It was actually like tied down to the to the uh, uh, you know the merch table uh, right right at the front, right at the side, I should say. And so I wrote mine down there, and then when I ran back up, I told uh, you know uh, uh, DC and Megs, uh, you know, hey, go down there and, and sign it. So uh, Megan ran down there and signed it for them. So. Uh, hopefully the, that'll be coming in the mail like they promised, but, um, as far as the show, it was a great show, um, in, in DC's review, he did kind of say it did just kind of feel like any other, uh, ICP show, which, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's kind of true, uh, I do kind of wish they'd mixed it up a little bit, try to make, like, a, kind of a prom, prom themed, uh, I was actually expecting it was going to be more love, you know, their love songs, funny love songs or whatever, but in the long run, I didn't really care, of course, they did play, you know, a couple of the, uh, you know, they played Prom Queen, and that was really cool, a bunch of, uh, they had people on stage that were, like, you know, guys in, like, tuxes or whatever, and they're dancing, and these chicks were acting like they were dead bodies and stuff, like they had been murdered and shit, dude, it was so fucking cool, um, and, uh, but, yeah, just, yeah, they played, like, I believe that, yeah, they played My Kind of Bitch, didn't they, but, uh, yeah, quite a few other, they did play a few other love song, whatever, whatever you want to say, romantic, you know, comedy type of songs, but, um, yeah, I, I guess really when I get down to it, I, I can't really think of what else they could have really played to make it that much different, but it really didn't matter. It was a fucking great show. Uh, of course, there's the whole controversy of Violent J forgetting lyrics. Whatever. <laughs> who, who fucking cares? Uh, I'm always yelling him out anyway, and uh, I, I actually commented on that post that he made. I was like, you know, he's like, oh, sorry, I forgot these lyrics or whatever, but I, I commented, I'm like, I've known these songs for 25 years, and I was yelling them out and forgetting, or I'd say the wrong word or start into the wrong verses, I'm just yelling them out in the crowd, you know, so I'm like, I guess the excuse of being able, he do it, does this for a living and does it every night, or, you know, when they're on tour and everything, but it's also, uh, I know they had done a few concerts during these uh, live streams, but, you know, they haven't really been doing things for you know, year and a half now as, uh, you know, as, uh, often. So it is what it is. Doesn't, didn't really bother me. Didn't take away from the show for me. Um, 
I've seen him so many times, I'm sure I've seen him fuck up before anyway, so I didn't care, but, um, I, I had a great time, it was a fucking blast to be back, uh, to be in the crowd, hanging with all the, all the Juggalos, uh, you know, seeing ICP throw down again at a really good venue, uh, like I said, all the, the, the staff was cool, uh, it was just a great venue overall, um, I was happy that, uh, I had a couple of beers, the beer prices were fair, I was expecting them to be, like, absolutely insane, um, but, uh, beer prices were pretty, they were still concert prices, but they were, it was fair as far as I was concerned, so, all around, just had a, had a great, uh, great time, uh, quick shout out, of course, uh, DC and Megs was awesome hanging out with them, uh, I ran into, uh, Jimmy Nips, my buddy that I met in, um, Colorado at the DCG Con, turns out he's from the area, he was there, ran into him, so shout out to Jimmy Nips, uh, I got a quick picture with, uh, Scotty D for the, um, Carnival Spirits Instagram, so, uh, shout out to Scotty D, and, uh, oh, uh, Danny Too Dope, uh, Ivory ran into her and brought her over to, to say hi, so shout out to her, uh, shout out to Big Andy, uh, I think that's pretty much everybody I saw that I knew, um, I, like I said, I think, uh, I know CPN was there, uh, but I did not see him at all, um, there's a few other people I know that said they were going to be there. I can't recall right off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everybody I saw. But, yeah, overall, great time. And uh, uh, shout out to Scotty Two Balls as well because I was taking pictures and sending them to him uh, for uh, the Instagram. So he was putting them up right away. Uh, so I will leave a link to that. Uh, he got everything right up to ICP, and then I took a shitload of ICP picks, and I didn't want to sit there going through them while they were on stage. So I sent them to him the next day, and he got those up uh, the following day. So they're all there now. But... And I'll, I'll leave a link to that. Uh, so anyway, i uh, just quickly going to show off like what I picked up. And uh, that'll pretty much wrap it up. So the uh, first thing, did pick up the uh, Severed Limb High School Baseball Hat. So they had a couple different colors of these. They also had one that um, had like the, the SL logo. Looked like the you know actual like what would be like on a letterman's jacket or whatever. So, um, But I like this one the best with the coloring and everything. So... Um, Picked up a shirt. They did have a few shirts, but I like this one. <laughs> so, uh, straight up like Severed Limb High School Class Reunion. And uh, with this one, I am actually going to have my, my buddy, um, uh, Jeremy, who makes uh, all my custom stuff. I have a coat that I bought from Old Navy a while back and, and just put in a bag and dropped it off with him while I'm thinking of something to... to make uh have him do and i think i'm going to have him put this probably not the class reunion part but the all the rest on the back of it and then i'm going to do this other thing i'll show here there is one of the the sl logos and i'm gonna have him put that on there so it'll kind of look like a leatherman's jacket or like an athletic jacket so and uh so these uh this they were giving away um just they had a table so it's like a uh name tag and uh let's see if I can, uh so right there I don't know how well he's going to be able to replicate that with it being so small, but uh, maybe he might be able to just kind of design it. But that's the SL Severed Limb logo. And so that I want him to kind of like put like on the lapel of the jacket and then put the other part on the back. So I'm planning on doing that. But so, yeah, these are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just uh, it's got the whole, you know, Severed Limb, you know, prom night, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's fucking cool. So. And then also, just quickly speaking of uh, Jeremy, I'm sure some of you might have noticed this. I picked this up from him. Um, was it uh, the, actually the, the day, the, the morning we were leaving? I picked it up on Friday from him. And then I have this long live evil logo on the back. And then this I've had for a while, but I kind of forgot about it. And uh, he made that for me. It's been probably at least half a year, if not longer. And uh, one day I was out running some errands and I forgot to bring a mask with me and I have some in my little center console and I'm like, what's this? And I pulled it out I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, obviously I know he made it for me, but I'm like, I must have just taken it and thrown it in there. <laughs> totally forgot about it. So I've been rocking that. So, but uh, this, I have a shirt of this and I literally just took a picture of it and sent it to him. I thought he did the whole thing. So, but uh, yeah, so uh, great job as usual to uh, Jeremy and uh, Furniture City Graphics. So, but yeah, that'll pretty much wrap it up. So um uh all in all great time at that show it was a fucking blast the uh venue was great the show was great and um i certainly can't wait till they get back to normal i'm hoping and praying that uh not praying because i'm an atheist but uh <laughs> hoping and uh deeply wishing that uh um hollow wicked happens this year i know uh twisted has announced that they are doing 
uh, Fright Fest at St. Andrews Hall. I know it's still a ways away, anything could happen, but I feel like if they do and they go through with it and they are allowed to, that ICP will do Hollow Wicked. I'm like, if worse comes to worse, maybe ICP could move Hollow Wicked to that Pierre's in Fort Wayne. It's not terribly far away. Uh, I obviously would still go, but it would really, it would feel very weird not being in Detroit on Halloween, but, uh, if it meant to be able to see them at Hollow Wicked, my favorite event of the year, uh, I would do it, so, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that works out, so, uh, but regardless, I hope they can do it in Detroit, maybe by then things will be a little more back to normal, but, We'll see. And I'm also hoping Astronomicon still goes on. Um, we'll, we'll see. I know they're moving forward with it. Whole other topic, but my buddy uh, Joe is kind of skeptical about whether or not it will happen, but I'll, I'll talk about that in another video, but I'm hoping it does. So, uh, Well, that's pretty much all I got. It's been about 20 minutes, so let's wrap this up. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting. This is Echo Side Fiend, and I will catch you in the next one. Too sweet.